It's OK Football's Luton Town Show. And I'm here in the heart of High Town, in the Bricklayer's Arms. What a pub. And I'm joined by my co-host, as always. I got Beefy, I got Phil, I got producer Matt. And we're here to round up everything that's gone on around Kenilworth Road this week before our double header. How are we all doing, lads? Doing good. Doing good. Sunday morning and we're having a beer. What could possibly go wrong? I know, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been, yeah, since where, I've been where here. Where did you go? I went up to Scotland um, and I got remarried again. Um, so I've had a, I've had a re- bit of a whirlwind. Remarried again? Yeah. That, I got that implies the third occasion. Oh, no. No, no, I've just you got just remarried. just got remarried. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, good to be back. Good to be back. Why did you get remarried? Um, my wife's been really poorly. Uh, so okay. we renewed our So you house, had a little ceremony. So, yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, yeah. Did it go well? It did. It did. Yeah, it was good. It was good. And it was literally the day after the Watford game. So I was... Absolutely on a high. <laughs> so yeah, you, you thank, said, the, thank the Lord. You said to your wife, them. <laughs> "This is one of the happiest moments <laughs> of my life." <laughs> Luton three, Watford <laughs> nil. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to say um, that promotion to the Premier League does top any wedding day. To be honest, I didn't say that. I'm no, just, no, but you, just don't, saying, you don't say that to your wife. Obviously, my wife doesn't watch this because she thinks this is all a bit sad. <laughs> but <laughs> on the off chance she is watching, then that isn't true. Well, I, I, I deliberately got remarried on the Sunday because of the Watford game <laughs> on the Saturday. <laughs> so that might tell a little bit of a story. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> waited for fixture day to come out and then I booked it. And producer Matt. I'm doing great, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah doing all right. Good to have everyone back on the pod. Yeah, well, that's what you do ahead of uh, a triple game week. You know, you, you freshen up the lineup. Triple yeah. game week. I love triple it. Game if week. anyone's still invested, by the way, I did win Gwent. I beat Gwent. I've done it. You beat Gwent? Yeah, yeah. All of it? All of it. Got all that the is got impressive. All the cards. Got all the, all the cards. Games. They sell a really nice Gwent set on Etsy, which I've given several long looks and put in the basket and not quite pull the trigger on i think that's going to happen for, for those of us with lives like myself <laughs> we're myself, doing a football can, podcast on sunday morning <laughs> none of us have lives can you explain what gwent is it's a yeah so the game by cd project red which are three there's a game in the game which is a card game you collect cards and you have to fight against opponents in it it's a bit it's a sort of um, magic the gathering yeah. type game Oh, so like Pokemon for nerds? Uh, uh, <laughs> Pokemon is already for nerds. It's more, more like kind of like Hearthstone, right? Yeah, it's good. yeah Hearthstone is a good... Yeah. Just And again, just to be clear, this is a football podcast. We're all nerds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Should we talk about football? <laughs> no, I don't want to. <laughs> oh, well, it was actually a point gained. Right. So let's round up everything that's gone on around Kenilworth Road this week in our news segment. I heard it through Rowan's Grapevine. I heard it through Rowan's grapevine. Shimona. Luton Town 1, West Brom 1. And this is a game that most Luton Town fans kind of forgot about. T minus 30 seconds after walking out of Kenilworth <laughs> Road. Good point, you know, against a team that were fifth in the table. But. How, how yeah. I mean, we've been very positive about West Brom on this show mm. and on Champ Chat, our other show about the championship, which you should watch straight after this. Um, but my God, they weren't very good, were they? No, they weren't. They had no it? interest in winning that game at all. It was like watching non-league football at it, times. Oh, it it was w- we, we were yeah. sat there, me and Wedge um, sat there saying, that if this was uh, a League Two fixture, we'd be going... Oh, well, it's still like a pretty bad standard. <laughs> the, like the quality's the, not the, there. The amount of time too, yeah. that the ball was just thumped and booted out and how bitty the play was. I mean, that first half was as uninteresting yeah. as a football match can come, really. I mean, obviously, there was a goal at the very, very end of it. And if you're a West Brom fan, you'll be absolutely loving it because it was a tidy little flick. Um, to, but it, the way it rolled in was just sort of a, a bit metaphoric about how... Sort of slow the game was the yeah. fact that it literally just dribbled in at the fast stick. It was a not weird one. Not to be too harsh on Luton, but I could kind of draw parallels for earlier games in the season to how West Brom were playing in this fixture. Just kind of the the lifeless, not getting the first ball, kicking it up to nobody. Difference is though, mm. teams were punishing Luton for playing like that. Yeah, mm. yeah, we don't have the cutting edge for that, and we yeah. haven't had all season. And that showed actually. It was a a moment of brilliance from Chong that got us the goal, but otherwise we did not look like a team that was going to score a goal, and nor did West Brom. 
it was really, really poor. I'd come in here before, and the beer festival was on, so I'd had a few beers. Then I'd gone for an Italian, um, Latista, on Guildford Street, recommended. So I had a bit of indigestion <laughs> during the first <laughs> half, as you can imagine. And that made watching it even worse, if that's possible. I mean, it was dreadful. It The game played like my stomach felt. <laughs> Um, second half though like, well actually not second half let's talk about some positives because I always like to do that Hashi had a great game Hashi did who'd believe if you move a player to the position they're actually supposed to play in they play quite well uh, I, 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 I feel you like you were he, very critical I feel of, like of he Hashi had a good he had a good Hashioka game in the context of Hashioka. Well, he did, like he did. He did pull a Hashioka. If you remember Wolves away last season, I do. I was there, to, and yeah, I hated where he it. Went yeah. to do the, the, the cross and yeah. uh, just like and, blitzed and it behind. The that's goal. my point. I think that one of those things that you're right, Mark. I'm not going to uh, like poo-poo what you've said completely, but what I would say is that I want a a, a right wing back to know when to loft it up to the back stick, when to whip it in along the six yard box. And I feel like that still isn't there. And when we were going back to that Wolves game, I know it wasn't the Wolves game, but going back to that one, the big frustration was that he was being played in the position that he should have been played in, and he kept passing it backwards. Lots, lots less of that this week, which I was really, really pleased about. And he got into the positions, but it's that final pass that still makes me think, ah, oh, it's just not quite there. And I think if you've got his legs uh, on Moses now, I think if you had the, the final sort of quality that Moses possesses in that in that final third but you had Hashioka's sort of ability to get up and down, up and down, up and down, and, and sort of be a bit ratty and get in and amongst those tackles. Because his tackling stats were incre- insane. He won loads yeah, and yeah. loads of jewels. And so I'm not going to sit here and, and, and like go, go all at Hashioka, but I think let's not get carried away. I think that it was a good Hashioka performance rather than a good outright performance. I mean, we've just said about <coughs> what the game, the game was like. The game was one of those ones where we were the only ones that looked like that we were going to win it, especially in the second half. We were the only ones that seemed like we were going to go forward and actually do something. Um, Devante Cole might say something different about that, that overhead hit, uh, overhead kick that he tried. But the reality of it was the game was mostly ours. We just couldn't do much. Well, we just didn't do much. It was like Matt said, those first few games of the year where we had no quality, no cutting edge, the final ball was dreadful. It was just that all night. Mm. And I had the dubious pleasure of being in the kind of road end, which I, where is not where I usually sit. Um, and obviously that adds a so- certain pallor to the game because the kind of road end is a bit moany. <laughs> and, yeah. and that sort of rubs off and say, so I've got indigestion. I'm watching a dull game of football. I'm in the Kenilworth road end, you know. Everything was just stacking up yeah. for this not Has- to be an enjoyable night. Hashioka's just spooned across into <laughs> you, into, <laughs> you, into your chest. Into my face, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, okay. I, I thought it was a good point. If you'd offered it to me before the game kicked off, I would have taken the point. Yeah. Well, uh, it's West Brom. I mean, all they get is one point, so... Yeah, really, they were offering us that before the gonna, game. It's going to change. They got the best yeah, manager in the league, they in they my did. opinion. Yeah, they did. It, it was, there was a w- crazy stat, wasn't there, that he's one of only probably about five or six managers that's unbeaten against Luton in, in eight games he's played us, and he's never lost against us. Yeah, he has yeah. our number. Yeah. You know, he knows what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was the game where, you know, if we were going to, coming back to what you said, a moment of magic, if we were going to have players that were going to be difference makers, that was the game for it. But we didn't, we didn't have any of that. Only Tahith Chong, um, a player who I would say is a fan favourite, Kraus, and he he was taken off. There were boos to the, the substitution, which I understand. I do understand that because he was obviously having a very good game. Liam Walsh and then Shannon Baptiste, they both came on. They had good games as well. They helped us get a bit more control in the middle of the park and perhaps Kraus was taken off because it is a three game week but I I, I don't <coughs> understand it like it, it's quite concerning when fans are booing your subs I yeah I didn't boo the sub because uh, I could see the point which was we've switched to a 4-4-2 it wasn't a 4-4-2 Rob Edwards said in his post match it was a Three, five, two. Chong was a left wing back. Yeah, no, I he agree. Wasn't. It looked like what? a four, four, two. Didn't it was it? a f- it, it was, was a straight four four, 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 two. I thought so as well. Someone has to play right midfield, and that ended up being Clark. Yeah, 
Um, in his natural position. It, yeah, so I can see why you keep Clark on, even though, let's be honest, the start of the season for Clark has been quite poor. He's not in one of his good runs of form. So I get why people on the surface were annoyed, but I think it made sense. I think part of it's about keeping Kraus fit for Wednesday. Part of it is about more control in the middle, like you said, and part of it is Clark is naturally suited to play that right midfield role. So I don't get people being upset about that substitution. Kraus was having a fine game. He didn't look happy. Walsh and Baptiste came on and had a great game. So let's not be too <laughs> critical of that. The thing is, is also to remember is that, again, that word of context. Like It was the 57th minute. We've <coughs> still not looked like we're going to do much yet. And yes, Kraus was having a good game. There was a couple of passes that were highlights in the first half, actually, where he cut through um, the defence with a like, slide rule pass. And he, he was having, again, a good game in his own context. <coughs> Excuse me. But it was one of those ones where if we sat there for another 10 minutes and there was no changes, we would have all been moaning, saying about the fact that Rob Edwards has waited too long to make changes again. And I actually thought that, that was a real positive the other day is that he did make changes. He made a change at half time. He made early changes in, in the second half. And the reality of it was that we just said it ourselves, that West Brom were there for the taking. And Walsh will give you a handle on the ball. Baptiste was also given as a handle on the ball. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I I I called you out, didn't I, on, on the Discord, Mark, about about Clark. I, I I I don't think he's having his worst season. I just think that he's. I I really like the way that Clark has the energy and the and the cleverness to stitch little things together. And I think that when you're trying to hold the ball rather than potentially going long, he took Adebayo off with as well. So it's a case of trying to make sure that we were playing through the lines. And then the goal came three minutes later, but yet we're talking about the fact that Kraus threw a hissy fit and threw a bottle at the floor yeah. um, when he went off. And I can understand it from his point of view. He wants to play, and I love that about him. I love the fact that he's absolutely up for the battle when he wants to play. But the reality of it is that you, you flip that and you think, what if he? who else was he going to gonna take off? Yes, you could say Clark, but like you just said, he put him more in his natural position. Kraus isn't a right winger. He's not got that, and he's, he's in the middle. And you've just put on Walsh, who's going to control the game. Baptiste, who's going to help control the game. So it's the right substitute to make. So as much as I understand that there was booing, I think that in the grand scheme of things, I think he did the right thing. Yeah, I agree. I just, the, you know, the man can't do right for doing wrong. Yeah. It's, everyone was moaning, oh, he never makes subs. He waits too long on his subs. So half time we change it up, and it instantly looks better. 15 minutes, nothing's really happened. He changes it up again, and a pretty bold move. And players will be upset about coming off. We don't need to read too much into that. Mm. He's upset for five minutes and then he understands. That's just how it works. That's what competitive football is like. I think they were perfectly good substitutions. And in fact, mm. Walsh and Baptiste coming on changed the game for us. Yeah. That, look, it's, it's a fair assessment. Like I'd hope that we have more depth in the, the team. It's, it's amazing how we had a, a transfer window, yet the squad still looks really threadbare. And that brings me on to <coughs> Mengi and Bell. So Mengi and Bell, they completed their 90 minutes, which mm. is fantastic. But now they're going to have to go again and go again against Cardiff and Middlesbrough because the, who else do we have? Well, Holmes, Holmes and Doughty can come back in and yeah. they can offer they can offer some, some well, options. Holmes a second yellow. Holmes is saying yeah, yeah, they're, they're both one game, game so we can we can get Holmes back in for for, and I thought that Holmes against against Watford in particular was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so I'll, I'm not got a problem putting Holmes back in um, if Bell needs to rest his legs midweek. Um, I think that Bell was probably the one that's obviously he's been out for longer, so he's probably the one that's gonna. Um, I suspect would uh, would need a bit more of a rest. Um, he looked fantastic. He looked though, absolutely. He's he? a Rolls Royce uh, of, of a defender. And the thing is, when he's missing, you really notice it. And then when he comes back, you kind of go, "Oh God, how good is he? He's so calm." And it, and it's the same with Mengi. Like I say, I've been critical of Mengi sometimes on this podcast in the, in the last few weeks. But the reality of it was that he came back this week and he was absolutely stout. Like he, there was nothing getting past him. The only the only criticism I would have. Uh, about any of the back line on on Friday was actually the goal where it was and and it's one of those ones where it's tinged with a bit of an excuse for them because you've got McGuinness and Mengi that are both absolutely so desperate to clear the ball that they get in each other's way if they've been playing with each other a little bit more I think there might be a bit more bit more understanding a bit a bit more chemistry about this is my ball rather than your one but the reality of it is they're both just hungry to clear that area um 
and yet yeah, moving forwards options wise like i say we can we can put doughty back in doughty will go straight back in let's be honest about it um and then you've got the opportunity to to share around some minutes with 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 homes being back so do we love victor moses as a right wing back though i don't no no you've got to play him further up field yeah, yeah. Uh, i also i think he he's been struggling because of the back to back to back 90 minutes yeah. that he's done i think taking him off at half time was a good shout yeah was because he, remember he's 33 you know we all know about you know the summer and the circumstances by which he joined us i don't think he has back to back 90 minutes in the tank but if we're now playing this sort of 352 chong's a 10 in front of two eights where does moses play in that is he just a super sub I play him up top, to be honest. You, you know, another option up top. You, you know, you drop know off the s- the front man. I said something to to David, who I sit near in the in the main stand on Twitter yesterday, and he was sa- I was saying about um, Edwards isn't averse to playing Doughty at right wing back, um, and mm. I thought Chong did absolutely brilliantly in that second half. And he's oh, let's face it, he's got legs. Chong playing left. Can wing you imagine back. it? Though? I don't Can want you imagine if in terms of like if you need if you need to go at it. Like having yeah. Chong at left wing back, Doughty at right wing back, and then having the three sitting there with with Fell, Fell and Mengi either side of McGuinness, that would be quite an interesting attacking route. To if we were if we chasing stuff, that would be quite an interesting uh, way of going about it because we've just seen Chong can do it. it well, yeah, he can, he can capitalize do it, on do it for forty five minutes a when we're chasing pass. the game. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know. It's just an interesting one to, to think about. So notice how I'm still not putting Hashioka in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got no your, right your views. <laughs> your views on Hashioka are well known, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and incorrect. Yeah, yeah. No, they're not incorrect. No. Yeah, <laughs> but for long-term <laughs> listeners of the podcast, go back to what was it—the the, the pod we did after Wolves last year. You <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just keep swiping down on the uh, on your Apple or Spotify app. And also, if you're if you're listening to us on Apple or Spotify, please follow the show there. It's it's uh, doing really well. I was say, lend yeah. me some sympathy. I was sitting next to him at the Molyneux. <laughs> 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 you, you're not going to be buying a Japan international shirt with Hashioka on the back. Do you know, what, do you know what, what amazes me? Uh, it, it, it genuinely amazes me. Look at my face. Genuinely amazed. <laughs> right? Uh, so, right? Is that is is the last two home games, someone has said that their favourite player is Hashioka. And this week it was a 51-year-old guy. And I was <laughs> oh like, I was just looking for a 51-year-old Japanese guy around the, around <laughs> the, around the, around the stadium. Because I was like, how on earth of all the players has he chosen Hashioka as his favourite player? I heard that. I think it was, was it like half time? Yeah. Where they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I didn't hear the age of the person. I just assumed 51. it was like, I assumed 51. it was like an ace or a 10-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I and I was going down to get like a half time tea. And, I had, and his favourite player is Hashioka. I like, literally burst well, out laughing <laughs> <laughs> it was a couple of weeks ago what game was it, it might have been Oxford um, and Hashioka was going around he wasn't in the squad that week so he's going around doing autographs and it's when we had that massive rainstorm mm-hmm. and so obviously the Kenny was leaking um, as it does and so he's signing this autograph and he just gets dumped load of water gets dumped <laughs> on his head <laughs> just in front of the Kenilworth Road end the, the gutter had obviously collected up just enough and then broken smack straight on Tachioka's head I felt oh. really sorry I don't wish for that him. on him <laughs> oh, I, well, I figured you were just up there with a bucket <laughs> Oh, well, anyway, now we, 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 we tend to look at what else has gone on around Kenilworth Road this week not, not very much has actually happened got an email from the supporters trust i think about oh, yeah. uh, the application that's gone in um where they're asking for responses to be submitted to collate information about the application apparently it's what caused big delays last time so the planning application yeah. for the okay well i actually spoke to uh brian <coughs> who i work with on hatter's heritage he's a fellow trustee and um, the directors actually invited him and Roger Wash, not me, because I, I don't think the directors want me anywhere <laughs> near the Power Court site. And he showed me some pictures, which were pretty cool. And you've probably seen pictures going around of the goalposts up on. Yeah. Yep. So that is actually where the goalposts are going to be. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, quite cool. I but assume they were there. Fi- they're going to be five foot higher. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, they're going to be building like yeah, platforming yeah. and stuff. So, yeah. 
Uh, that's pretty that's cool. interesting. Like that. Yeah, they so have they put cool them up as like a guide to where they're going to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and that's you'll see there are like lollipop sticks that are red and white. So that is also where the dugout is going to be. Ah, nice. So it's interesting that they've sort of mapped it out. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, fuming that I didn't get an invite to, <laughs> to Power Court. You know, I would have loved to trudge the dirt with Gary Sweet, <laughs> David Wilkinson. We love that. Yeah, don't don't think you're gonna be getting that invite anytime soon, mate. No, no, of course not. <laughs> Never. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day. But yeah, I think that's uh, everything from Kenworth Road this week. Now it's time to spin the wheel. It's OK Football's Wheel of Games. It's time for the wheel. Wheel of games, wheel of games, wheel of games, wheel of games. It's time to spin the wheel. Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> the wonky wheel. Oh, no arms, us or likes. Who fancies having a go at I've that? I've had a, I've had a go at this you one. Yeah, Must so be your go, Phil. You got like thirty oh seconds. Thirty six is the record 36. to beat. Thirty six. I've got no chance about that. I earn okay, uh, all the a, time. Okay, uh, I'm gonna pull up. The the old. Do you want to stopwatch. explain the game to everyone watching? Ollie? Yeah, so you need to talk. Well, Phil's going to be talking about a Luton Town topic. It can be a player, it can be the stadium, it can be anything to do with Luton Town Football Club. And he's got to talk for a minute or as long as possible with no ums, ers, or likes. Okay. And we'll, we'll be keenly listening. Okay, I'm going to talk about what Kenilworth Road means to me because Kenilworth Road to me is a home away from home. It's the place that I get the most joy from, away from home. And uh, <laughs> oh, I just oh. said, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I, don't, I love you, Kenilworth Road. I want to talk about you all night. <laughs> <laughs> that was 15 seconds. Beefy oh, is still dear. the leader with 36. I'm really good at talking. Yeah. I'll have a go Without next erring. time. I oh. think that's a good topic, though, because for a lot of people, that'll be true. I think their impression of Kenilworth Road. Some of us have been going there since we were 10, mm. 11, um, and I oh, just don't know them, but it's not my go, so it's fine. It's 115 uh, years of history. Yeah, and yeah. so as much as we're all, we're all clamouring for this new stadium, we want it to happen, we want the club to grow, walking out of there on that last day is going to be quite something mm. for an awful lot of people. There's going to be 10,000 men, women, children that are going to literally be streaming tears when they stream out of that stadium. Yeah, yeah. I... I, I I love that place. Like it means so much to me. It's um it's been particularly poignant for me the last couple of weeks because my granddad passed away and I sit in his seat now. And um the guys at the club have done done my family a real solid by actually removing my, uh, my granddad's seat because he was one of the last people to get a plaque with his name on it and yeah. um and they replaced that when when they changed all the seats and they've actually given that to my family. So um I'm very very thankful for the club if anyone does watch this from the club. Um but this place it 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 means it means the world it's it's where families come together and it's it's things like meeting on the concourse and i mean like i say if you if you see us guys hey say hello but um but th there's a nice sort of group of um like a luton family sort of forming and and there's there's hundreds of these little sort of miniature luton families that that enjoy each other's company on any given match day and and feel completely at ease with their love of the club and uh like I say, it was a, it was a good it was a good um, topic that I wanted to bring up. I'm sorry I didn't do it justice for more than 15 <laughs> seconds. Well, you, you did it there with no arms, or or <laughs> yeah, likes. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I've met some of the best people that yeah. I've met in my life through Luton Town Football yeah. Club. It, yeah. It's absolutely wonderful, whether or not the club like me. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't care. I like the people. I, I that think I've you're met. you're overestimating um, how much how they the, dislike yeah. me. No, I think you're <laughs> overestimating it. I think they nothing you. They're, 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 yeah, they're <laughs> nothing me. <laughs> uh, okay. On that on that lovely note, it's time for Mark the Hatter's super question of the week. Mark the Hatter, he's put a question to us. Mark the Hatter, he's put a question to us. It's time for Mark's super question. Here we go. Thank you, Mark, obviously, for getting us this question, as always. It's always appreciated. So we're doing a kind of a university challenge-style stat-based questions for the season so far. This is from stats taken from FOTMOB football app. Um, so it's going to be a question. You name five players. You can confer, and then you come up with your top five. 
that's not like university challenge at all. I think with the top question, you can't confer, can you? I haven't watched it. Fine, for we years. weren't we weren't all on. Uh, it's more like quiz. family fortunes. We weren't all on quiz game shows <laughs> like you are. <laughs> yeah. Our survey says. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question one: Can you name the top five Luton players this season to have the highest pass succession rate? It's going to be our defence. Yeah, it'll yeah, be McGuinness. McGuinness. Kaminsky. Kaminsky. <laughs> it's going to be... Probably Amari Bell. If He's not played many games. There's a minimum. He played Mc, yeah, McGuinness, Doughty, but he puts a lot of crosses. You'd expect, out, so you'd crosses. expect the centre midfield to, even though we bypass them a lot, you'd expect them to be in there. Um, Liam Walsh. Clark, I reckon Liam Clark. Walsh has... Uh, Clark started every game yeah. pretty yeah. much, hasn't he? So... Clark, Clark should be in there. Just, Kaminsky, just to really quickly go back on this. This is past succession rate. Success rate. Yes. Right, okay. So it's not a case of how many passes, no. how well they've done. Yeah. Right, Yeah, so okay. Kaminsky's going to be there. Oh, P5, can we, can P5 we P5 are? And oh, yeah, yeah. Kaminsky, so McGuinness. Kaminsky, McGuinness. Doughty. Doughty. Mm. Clark. Clark. P- a lot of passing backwards. Yeah, but still. Mm. Morris. Mm. Morris. Morris doesn't lose the ball. He doesn't lose often. the ball. Yeah. He doesn't pick ons, but yeah. yeah. Are they considered passes when they're flick ons, unsuccessful passes? We need to lock in a fifth. Um, Moses. Moses. Okay, so you got zero. <laughs> <laughs> There's it only like 12 <laughs> candidates. <laughs> so it's uh, Zach Nelson with 90.9%. Oh, because oh, <laughs> it's not based on total number, Bingo. is it? Uh, yeah. Liam Walsh, 85.7. Shanda Baptiste, Liam Walsh. Did. Shanda Baptiste, 84.4. Nakamba for 83.6. Mm. And Raul Walters for 82.8. Okay. <laughs> so actually playing more games is worse yes. for your yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Question two, there. question two. Oh, there's more. Can you name the top five Luton players this season to have the highest... Expected assists. Doughty. Doughty. Doughty's got to be the highest. Uh, Doughty, Morris. Morris is... uh, Yeah, okay. Doughty, Morris, Adebayo. Chong. Kraus. Chong. 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 Kraus. Okay, you got uh, Alfie Doughty. Yeah, 0.39. Kraus, yeah, 0.12. And Brown, 0.11. Brown. Those are the three. Did you say Brown? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah, yeah. Of course, <laughs> <we> <laughs> did, yeah. nobody yeah. checked the footage. Also, it was Shannon Baptiste, zero point one five, and Jordan Clark, zero point one five. Okay. Mm. Okay. Final, final one. Here we go. Can you name the top five Luton players this season to have the highest average player rating on FootMob? Kaminsky, Al- Alfie Doughty, Kaminsky. Uh, is Morris has got quite a few assists. Morris, Morris year, against Watford God, was yeah. basically a ten out of ten. When yeah. he was unstu- yeah, he was not unreal. on FootMob, he wasn't. Uh, was he not? <laughs> on, in that game. I think he probably was. He was high. No, he it's hard was to high. get a 10. Yeah, yeah, he he not a 10, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but high. So what are we going for? Kaminsky, Kaminsky Doughty, Morris, Doughty, Morris, Chong. 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 Would have had a worldy game. This for the season, though. Is it top five, did you say? Mm-hmm. Kraus. Okay, so Alfie Doughty and Tom Kraus is right. 7.49 and 7.11. Then it was Jordan Clark, Ted and Mengi, and Reese Burke. Mm. Yeah, Reese Burke. Oh, Reese Burke. Yeah. 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 Player. Cool. Good question. This yeah. Week. Thank you very much, Mark. Really appreciate you, mate. Really appreciate you. But Matt, why is this podcast different from all other podcasts? I don't know, Ollie. Why is this podcast different from all other podcasts? Because, because there's, there's a, a joke in here. Oh, there you go. You actually joined in this week. <laughs> I was all on my my own <laughs> last week. <laughs> I went to a silent auction. I won a dog whistle and two mimes. An engineer dies, and he goes to the pearly gates, and Peter checks the dossier and says, oh, you're an engineer, you're in the wrong place. So the engineer reports down to hell, and he's let in. Pretty soon, the engineer is dissatisfied with what's going on and the level of comfort, so he starts designing, building improvements, they've got air conditioning, flushing toilets, escalators. One day, God calls up Satan, he says, how's things going down there? And he says, oh, things are great, we've got air conditioning, flushing toilets, escalators. There's no telling what this engineer is going to do next. God replies, what? You've got an engineer? This is a mistake. He should never have gone down there. Send him up here. Satan says, no way. I like having him around. God says, right, send him back or I'm going to sue. Satan laughs and says, yeah, where are you going to get a lawyer from? (laughs) 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 Very good. Good stuff. Good stuff. But now it's time to 
play the Sluga Six and look ahead to oh, the double game week. Sluga, 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 Okay, guys, so in the Sluga Six this week, finally, I did something. Yeah, well done. <laughs> I finally got more points than everyone else. Uh, it's finally happened. It's taken 14 game weeks. And has <laughs> that ha- lifted you off the bottom of the table, <laughs> no, Phil? No, it, it has not, <laughs> but it makes me happy. Uh, so, um, I got six, we- uh, six points this week, so I got double points for predicting the draw against West Brom, um, and I hit the nail on the head with the, uh, the Swansea game, so I managed to get six uh, points. All the guys around me managed to get... Uh, one point and two points for Matt, actually. Um, so Matt's drawn level with Ollie in joint second place, and they are two points behind Beefy here. So Beefy's uh, and, and doing who's very, very who's well. top of the league? Just Beefy just is just, just to be Beefy clear. Top of the league, just yeah, to be very, just very, to be very really clear. clear. Just yeah. to use those specific words, Beefy <coughs> is, uh, yep. is top, of, top the league, of the league. So. Um, I'll be speaking to Thomas um, this week from um, Cardiff. Um, booked in, speak to him on Monday night. So is that the name of his podcast? Cardiff. D- no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, sorry, uh, I should have given him a credit there. Uh, it's Thomas Taylor um, on on uh, on Twitter, but uh, on X. But uh, yeah, he'll be speaking to me on Monday night about our upcoming game against Cardiff, which brings us to the game. So we've got Cardiff at Kenilworth Road. Um, how do we see it going, guys? Well, everyone expected a walkover, but Cardiff have suddenly decided to start playing football properly. It's, well, it's five five wins in the last six. Yep. Yeah, I'm not I'm not looking forward to that. Coming to the Kenny. No, if you just if you took the game on form, we're going to get mullered. They still haven't. They, they still haven't hired a full time manager yet. Have they? They don't, don't need one, do they? No, <laughs> I think Omar Rizza's going to get the yeah, job full yeah, time because what a turnaround! Yeah, he's yeah. been sensational there. Oh, but you know, there's no point dreading it though. How how are we're, we going to deal with the triple yeah. game week? We're we're at home, and and that's that's a massive advantage. And I know that results last last couple of results haven't been as positive, but the reality of it is, is that you look at the Watford game. That was a sign of what we can do. The Sunderland game, I thought we were very very good. Yep. I thought that we were just very unlucky to come up against a team that had the quality that they had. Uh, I mean, that that goal from Mundell was was a wonderful wonderful strike. Um, so we we. We're, we're decent at, at home when we, when we want to be. I thought that we were the only side that looked like we were going to win it against West Brom. So take the positives and uh, and and understand that if we if we take three points off of off of Cardiff, who, like I said, they're no mugs. Like, but the reality of it is is that we can beat anyone at home on, on our day. And I think that we'll, we need to do a little bit of jiggling around potentially to to save some legs. Um, but the reality of it is that at home under the lights, I'd take Luton against most teams. So. I'm very excited because my brother can't make it to the Cardiff game, and that's not to be offensive about him. He was going to return his season ticket for the £10 voucher, and I said, I'll give you a tenner <laughs> to have an empty seat next to me because <laughs> <laughs> I want to sit like this for the whole game. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm I'm worried. I'm worried that we're going to get steamrolled, to be honest. I think, you know, it was a late win for them yesterday, and actually they didn't really look like winning it until then well eight, one nil down in the 88th minute yeah and you know that it could have been two or three actually we'll talk about that in champ chat but um i just i don't feel like we're on form nothing's clicking we've got no quality in the final third again that that we had has sort of dropped off and i'm just worried we're gonna we're gonna lose it i know it's in in this insane. relegation six pointer well you know on Cardiff's form i don't think <laughs> they're, they're getting relegated no. mate I uh, can't speak about us right now because, uh, you know, it, it's concerning coming down from the Premier League. Our recruitment was heavily directed <coughs> towards making sure that we had a competitive team if we were to get relegated to the championship. And we look at the team and there's no magic. There's no X factor. There's literally no impetus in the team right now. All I want to see is some fight and desire and you know then after Cardiff we have Borough and you know sure Borough have been a little bit dodgy at the back they've but uh, and they need about a billion chances just they're, to score a they're goal really up and down I, yeah. I would back us to beat them before I back us to beat Cardiff mm. away at Borough yeah rather than home against Cardiff need, need, need Ryan nah. Tunnicliffe mate way off Ryan Tunnicliffe to uh, turn in a squeaky uh, squeaky little cross from James Bree. I'm gonna I'm gonna back myself on this and go on bet three six five 
to back exactly that. All right. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go bet for 365 are getting a donation this week. I'm going <laughs> Luton to lose at Cardiff. No, double double against with, Cardiff at uh, home. Yeah, at, at home mm. and to win up in Borough. Nah. We do not condone gambling on this podcast. Gamble or Mark's opinions. Do we not? It's not not the podcast for me then. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, like or lump it, you're here to stay, and we'll, we'll lock you back in that cupboard afterwards. So you can't. Well, you know, Mazza's got you Comes pulling out your shift anyway. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to be clearing the glasses. Come later. out, do the podcast. Come go back in the cupboards. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> oh, but that's us done for this week. Let's be really positive and. Also, yeah, let's be positive, Mark. Yeah, let's be positive. <laughs> Always be positive. What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to bleep that. Oh, yeah, ah, we are. Oh, beefy. As always, a big thank you to our host, the Bricklayer's Arms. Uh, there was a good time at the Halloween beer uh, festival. Yeah, wasn't I was it? here on Friday. Uh, no, sorry, Thursday. What was your favourite beer, Matt? Uh, it would have been the Mad Squirrel uh, Triple Sour. Oh, I yes. Was yeah, a, yeah. I was a big, big fan of that. I also liked the other uh, cask one they had as well. Oh, the, the Pale Ale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I forget they, the they name. They were both very, very well good beers. They had a dark mild called Black Widow, which I loved, but it was 5.5%. Yeah. I, it's I, just, I, did. I don't. You don't want to dive into drinking that, that strong a beer. Did you, did you try the chocolate stout one? Uh, yeah. The, I, I wasn't yeah. a fan of that. The coffee sort of yeah. taste. And, uh, Not for me. I like coffee and I like beer. I want coffee and beer to be separate. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Can't do that. Ooh. Oh, also, sorry, really quickly. I did also actually see someone who watches the pod. So, hello to whoever that is. Thank you for buying me the beer. Well done on getting his name. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Apologies. But yeah. to, to be fair, meeting someone who watches this pod is so vanishingly unlikely <laughs> that <laughs> you're just overwhelmed instantly. Yeah. To the one person watching this, hello. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And thank well, you for buying Matt a beer. And thanks, for, only, the, thanks so. for the super question of yeah. the week, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> the, the only time I've ever been recognised is when that lad was like, Beefy, you're an absolute boop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and also, if you're watching this, well, if you're still watching this, I don't know why you would be on YouTube. Remember, like the video and subscribe for even more Loose in Town content. And, well, let's be having it. Cardiff and Borough, as always, come on, you hatters.